Brian, how tall were you before the surgery? Uh, I was 183, so just basically uh, six foot. This guy's like six. Hey, no, oh my God, he was six two. Again, you predicted the future because you said there's gonna be some guys. He was six two. Yo, this is a game changer. All right, follow up. So remember this guy who got the surgery, uh, basically went from five six to I believe six foot tall, uh, and now they want to interview him, see how the whole, how his whole life is going. So let's take a look. Spent $100,000 on limb lengthening surgery. They break your bones surgically, they cut them and they attach devices that ex- 100K? Holy shit. That's a, that's, that's a house. That's is a it, down payment on a, that's a good it's, down payment. It's a, the, yeah. It's not a down payment on oh, a, it's a good shit. down payment. Bro, I mean, if you got the money, I guess. Go ahead. What? Just press play, yo. What's wrong? I had to gather myself. That was a lot of money. You know why? Because I know it's not just the money. is they break the bones. Yeah, so there's a long rehab. I broke my bones and my foot. Yeah. Uh, tibia pyrene, right? The two, yeah, right? the tibia. He mean to tell me on both legs they broke it at six different places? Six different places. Put some screws so on So this man had to have been out of commission for at least half a year. Bro. I broke my foot accidentally, and when it's humid outside, I feel it. Okay. You broke your sh consciously in six places, six each places. foot, that's 12? Yeah. You're a whole ass barometer. Hey, this might be the best six inches of his life. Pause. Over time, the world is a much different place now that I'm taller. When I first did the surgery, and people said they hope I never walk again, but as it grew, it actually started to garner a lot of attention from women. I thought we were on the first day. You're impressing me. No, no, you're impressing me. I'm six foot. I'm Denzel Siggers. I'm 27 years old, and I spent $100,000 on limb lengthening surgery. So the surgery day, they put me under anesthesia. So you have both an internal device and an external device. It was very shocking. It felt unreal to see it attach myself because I had never seen anything like this before. I was actually in a relationship prior to the surgery. Once I told her I wanted to go get surgery to get taller to boost my confidence, she was completely against it. And inevitably, we end up ending a relationship, even though she was someone that made a lot of jokes about my height herself. So she hasn't seen I could imagine that somebody in a relationship receiving comments like that, that really play into their insecurities, would make them more insecure and more wanting to change that kind of behavior, right? I can imagine that some women who have issues with their chest have a partner who makes fun of their chest inside of the relationship dynamic, and that makes these women really push to get a chest surgery, right? Get their get their taste bit or whatever. Um, and so, I highly recommend for all the people watching at home, just be careful about your partners and the people around you in security when you make fun of them, because you may be pushing them towards a surgery that may alter their life completely. And whether we like it or not, people are very much governed by their insecurity. They change their whole behaviors, the way they dress, the way they live their day-to-day -day lives based off of that. So just understand what it is that you might be playing into when you do that, especially as a partner. I think those people have to be the most sensitive about stuff like that. Men's height, for a lot of them, it is a deep insecurity. So try to be a little bit respectful. Also to the people watching, just because you feel deeply insecure don't mean you got to get surgery to change your whole life. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, he's the one that took the decision. Yeah. So I understand what you're saying about the partner, but the, the last decision, the 100K and all that, that's him. That's him, but... I do, yeah. That's I him and most people I know who get surgery. I understand, yeah, I understand what you're saying. She hasn't seen me, but she's just seen, like, my social media, and she's been trying to call. She's been trying to make her way back, but that's somewhere I don't want to go back to. Today, I'm actually going on a date for the first time since I've had Your ex be like, you gonna get this heart surgery? Man, you stupid, I'm out, bitch. And then all of a sudden, you come back. What were you saying about my legs? It's the crooked walk. Motherfucker look like he came out of a thriller video. Gang, 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 Don't want to go back to Today I'm actually going on a date for the first time since I've had my surgery. So it'll be my first date at six foot. I'm very excited. This okay, so choice. Between you being five five or you being six two or walking like this. So you know what he's walking like? He was taking a shit and somebody rang the doorbell. 
Ah, fuck. <laughs> oh, oh, this is my favorite one. <laughs> oh, fuck, 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 Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're about to do, Key, you know what I mean? I'm turning to get out there and really fill out this new version of me, like see how he interacts with the world, see how he interacts on a date. In the world we live in, we say don't judge a book by its cover, but obviously people are judged off their appearance first. But I do feel like once I get back into dating, my personality will be what carries me in a relationship. Oh, hello, how you doing, how you doing? Come on, you hug me too, huh? She really walks like that. Well, in his defense, maybe this is not permanent. Maybe like after a year or two, he's not gonna walk like that. Your social. My social? Yeah. My, my social media? No, your social security. My social security. <laughs> you a scammer? I didn't say that. Are you just I was just funny. trying to get to know you. Oh. So. What you trying to do with my social? Oh, you trying to put a ring on it that fast? I didn't know you was that type of guy. I like that. I just say my last relationship was two years ago. I got high standards and a lot of requirements. I think you found me. Really? Yeah, because I'm high now. I, have enough? I mean, before I was just standards. Now I got high standards. Hey. How would you like your baby's father to be? <laughs> <laughs> Do I make the cut? It's crazy because they're gonna have they're gonna have a baby together, and him and the baby gonna walk the same. <laughs> imagine, okay? Imagine, imagine you dating this guy, right? And, 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 and you're the girl. You're just in bed. You're waiting, right? And he's like, "You've been waiting for me." Yeah, Johnny. Nice. <laughs> been very busy, but most recently in the last six months, as you know, I went underwent limb lengthening surgery. Mm -hmm. So, what was that experience like? Probably one of the hardest things I've ever done. Conversation was very good. I could see like us going on a few more dates, getting to know each other a lot more. He's gonna call me for sure. It's actually a very fun first date. I didn't expect to have as much fun as I did. I thought it was- This broad is stupid. This girl think this guy's trying to date her. You think he broke his bones in six different places so he could go on one date and settle on the first woman? Oh. No, he been a hobbit half his life. He said, I'm done with that shit. Now that I'm part of the master race, I'm cleaning house. He's been he's he's, he's been a hobbit all his life. Now he's going to Mordor. Yeah. He's going on a trip. Good for him. And it don't involve no ring, my girl. <laughs> That's it. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bar. That's a bar. Be a little bit more nerves or something, but everything went great. It was a very fun time, very beautiful girl. It was nice to step out in the world with a lot more confidence than before, to be a lot more sure of yourself and not wonder what she's thinking, but really just be who you are. It is much easier to reach things that I, I struggled with before. The world is a much different place now that I'm taller. Uh, people smile at me everywhere I go. I've never had this kind of like reaction from people before and I really enjoy it. I've always been very unhappy with my height pretty much my entire life. I realized I was short around 15 years old and ever since then it's kind of weighed on me. I tried a lot of different things to make me taller or at least appear taller, such as spinal decompression, put insoles in my shoes, inversion tables, and they would only give me about an inch more. As far as my recovery process, I work out every day. I'm just restricted in some of my abilities, like squatting. Recovery takes about six months to a year. I'm much further ahead at my current stage than most people would be. It's only been about two and a half months since I completed surgery. I can't. Okay. Okay. That okay. changes everything. Okay. Because if that's just two and a half months, okay. that's really good. Okay. I thought this was going to be much more. I thought it was like more than that. <clears throat> okay. Never mind. Pretty much do everything that I need to do for the most part on a normal day to day basis. So I'm very pleased with where I'm at. The surgery has significantly boosted my self esteem, mainly because everything I had to go through to get the height, so I appreciate it more. But just being home and seeing how the world reacts to me at six foot 
rather than 5-5 five, five has been like a very amazing experience for me. I've always been like an outgoing person, but now I can just be myself without caring what people think or what people have to say. I'm me all the time now, rather than hiding behind like insecurities. Seven inches. That's a lot. Um, why does that statement throw me off? Let me think about that. Why does it bother you? You don't understand what he's trying to say? You're insecure about something. Mm -hmm. Something physical about yourself. Because the way they see it is that their insecurity is not part of themselves. Yeah. Even though it is. It is. But it's not because it's not their true self. And I go like this because, no, that's not your true self. Yeah. That's who you want to be. Yes. And now I've become who I want to be, so. I could be who I really can be. Right. That's really what it means. But. It's just the the what is your definition of true self, I think. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In their mind, it's and that's everybody that I believe that's everybody that's making that that's that, that, that's having surgery. They think like that. What's the definition of their true self? Right? Bigger lips, bigger boobs, bigger butt, bigger everything, you know what I mean? Uh flatter stomach, you know. That's to what how how they see themselves is equivalent to their true self for them yeah for them that, that's a great great answer. but your true self is really who you are right now yeah. if you change anything that's not you no more yeah but i mean you should be who you are whether or not you lose a limb or not you should be who you are at five five and you should be at six six now do these things impact the way that people perceive you sure i guess that's going to play a part let me listen for being honest with ourselves mm-hmm. we all do a certain level of self-editing right we all go to barber, people get their nails done, right? We, but we deem these ones acceptable because the cost that it puts on herself is not so elevated. We're not actually cutting open the flesh or whatever. That's but a, if you think about it, it's just an arbitrary line that we've decided to draw. That's a different type of grooming. I'm not grooming. Like, going to the barber and extending six, six inches, it's not the same kind of grooming. I understand that we self-edit. Right, we edit ourselves. You say it's not the same. I think it's just a different degree. The degree. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, the degree between a a heat wave and a fucking third degree burn is like, obviously, our first degree burn. Yes. Yeah. But, okay. I get what you're trying to say. Yeah. The difference between these things is the cost to yourself is not as extreme, obviously, if you go to haircut versus doing this. Yeah. Um, But we're all trying to present ourselves in a way because we care about how society perceives us. We care about how we perceive ourselves. Right? Is that fair to say? Sure. Um, so, I mean, we just drawn, and if you think about it, the line has been moved so many times already. It used to be that Botox was like a weird thing. Now it's super normalized. Dudes are getting Botox. Just, people don't even care. You Half the people you know have gotten Botox and you don't even realize. That's how normal it is. Like, they don't even think it's like a real elective surgery. You know, people getting a little bit done in their lips, a little bit, like very modest stuff. Very normalized. Uh, people having lipo or tummy tucks. Very normalized. The idea of what used to be like too far versus what it is now is changing. And it's, I think it keep changing. People are dyeing their hair like crazy. People are doing all kinds of extensions. People are doing all kinds of changes to their body. And they're no longer being seen as too far. And you're seeing that line move. I'm not saying I love it. I'm just saying this is the inevitable end to the journey we were already on. Let me rephrase. This is the inevitable stop on the journey that we're on because it doesn't stop here. You're all going to be able to edit your skin color at some point. You're going to be able to permanently edit your eye color because I already know they're very close to finishing that up. You're going to be able to edit every part of yourself like we're in a cyberpunk future. And that's inevitable. So we have to come to terms with that's going to be the future that we're going to live in. Most of us who live today don't want to accept that. But for our kids and their generations afterwards, I think they're going to have to. Yep. Unfortunately. I mean, look at this. Ozempic is a drug. Mm -hmm. How many people are taking that thing like crazy right now to lose weight? Just to lose weight. So people don't want to take the hard road, okay? Everyone that... A lot of people don't want to take the hard road. If they can do something, how many dudes want to get bigger? What are they doing? Everyone is going to take... Whatever cuts they... Well, let me, let me rephrase. A lot of people are going to take whatever cuts they can to get to the destination that they want to go to. Mm-hmm. 
They will. So me knowing that that's part of the human nature, I don't see that changing anytime soon as the technology becomes more available, more affordable. Like we're laughing today because it's 100K. When this surgery is 20K, how many dudes are going to jump on that shit? 100%. Same thing that happened with boob jobs. Yep. Having big titties don't even matter no more because everyone can just get them anytime they want. And dudes (laughs) don't care for a lot of them. I'm telling you guys, this stuff is so normalized now that the I'm I'm just thinking like I'm not even gonna be around for a lot of it. But just thinking about what it's gonna be like in 20 years, mind blowing. I've already seen how plastic surgery has changed so much. <clears throat> how much better they've gotten with certain techniques. Yeah. How much more natural they can do a lot of the stuff and safer. Dudes are getting hair transplants like crazy. That's and normalized. It's, it's, People don't even laugh at it anymore. They're it's just like, cost, oh, your hair looks good. No, it's cost effective. Yeah. People are just like, oh, yeah, good. Good on you. Yeah. And, and, and how can I laugh at these dudes who are getting hair transplants and don't want to embrace being bald when you see how people get treated completely differently when they're bald or no, they're not? So, um, yeah. You know what's also interesting? Being six foot, six foot is going to be irrelevant. I'm pretty sure there's going to be people who are six foot and they're going to get a surgery to be six, seven. And that's going to be the new standard. Yeah. You know, if women are going to be, we're going to be like here and all the days will be yeah. like this. If this surgery becomes affordable, there's no way short guys in mass will not be doing it. And then if you don't do it, you're going to be the one short guy who's like, oh, I'm fine with it. I don't know. It's just, just thinking about that future is absurd. It, 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 it's also if they change the technology altogether, like. If they just find something like they can replace your bones yeah. and then just mm-hmm. remove the ones and just put one just, in. Just... Pause. Sorry. <laughs> Pause. My hey. boy. What's up, man? Good to see you. How did you meet Brian? We was getting the same surgery in Turkey together. We met in the physiotherapy. Brian, how tall were you before the surgery? Uh, I was 183, so just basically uh, six foot. This guy's like six two. Hey, no, oh my God, he was six two. Again, you predicted the future because you said there's gonna be some guys. He was six two. Yo, this is a game changer. And you didn't, you didn't, you didn't do that because you want to play ball because ain't no way you're playing ball after that. You did that, just, it's, it's aesthetic. 183 centimeters. Brian, how tall were you before the surgery? Uh, I was 183, so just basically uh, six foot. And how tall are you now? It's gonna be over six, six, six right now. Nice. One thing that's kind of hard for me is I'm just barely now getting into the phase where I'm in a walker. You're already at the walking in assisted phase. For me, I will honestly have to tell you that it's really just being patient, but at the same time, trusting yourself because since you haven't walked in so long, it gets, you're nervous to walk. Whenever I'm just trust myself, everything is gonna be okay. My father had the worst reaction. He just didn't understand why I would do something like this to myself. He's actually been avoiding me since I've returned home because he thinks I'm taller than him now, but my mother has been extremely so. Do you think your dad is avoiding you because he's insecure that you're taller than him? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Let me put myself in the dad's shoes. I think I would be super incredibly sad if the child I had raised felt like they had to go under the knife in order to feel comfortable in the world. I would feel sad. And the reason why I feel sad is because I didn't do a good job of instilling and guiding my child to have enough self-esteem to be able to handle the fact that not every aspect of them is going to be accepted in the world and they don't have to cut themselves open to be okay with themselves yeah if any so of if, yeah, if any of my kids get any surgery aesthetic like that i i i'm gonna take it as a failure yep oh, wait when you say failure what does that mean i failed i failed them okay i failed my kids so they really yeah i failed them yeah yeah, I feel I'd feel sad. So I think you might want to rethink that portion. I think your dad may not be thinking. I could I'm not I could be wrong. Maybe he's like, dang, this little I can't slap him no more. Yeah, maybe he's thinking that. But well, you I can don't. always kick his knees. <laughs> Facts. Supportive. My brothers have been very supportive. They're very excited that I got surgery, and it's something that's changed my life overall. 
So initially when I first did the surgery and I started posting it, it was a lot of like negativity, a lot of hate. People called me crazy, people called me insane. They said they hope I never walk again. But as it grew and people saw me continue to post my progress, a lot of the comments began to change. It actually started to garner a lot of attention from women telling me like how strong I am and how manly it was to go through something that like endures so much pain. I want people to take away from this is not even just hype, but I say do the things that make you happy. Don't care what other people think because people will judge you no matter what you do in life. So just do what makes you What? No, you're having this. You're having you're having this discourse now. That's your talk. Like what you're was speaking that? from the height of your privilege. What, what's, the, what's the quote? Is this, oh, I love my body. Yeah, you love it now that now that you altered everything. I seen so and and yo, I shut I shut up about that. But some people that I know, they be like, mm, natural, and I'm like, you're not. I like me natural. Natural don't mean you don't have makeup on. If your face full of Botox and fillers and all of that good stuff, good on you. Live your life, but don't claim natural. Don't claim you look you you you. You cannot claim that you you beat a game if you apply a cheat code. I love myself the way I am, the made the way you made you. Yep. And that's fine. It's just that and the reason I'm not clowning you because you're writing that, I'm clowning you because there's people following you thinking that it's all natural, believing of what it actually means and it's not. It's not. It's not. Whenever I see some people I call out one of my friends like that. Uh, I want to post videos of me training and stuff like that. I'm like, you know, demo, you had a tummy tuck and then you had lipo. Are you going to tell people, oh, you should do the exercise like that? They're looking at you because they think this is the result. But it's not. You apply the cheat code. Hmm. It's really easy to be like, love yourself. Love my body. Mm-mm. No. Do what makes you happy. Recovery is taking longer than I realized it would, but I have no regrets. Like anything you want in life, it comes with a certain price. It comes with hard work. But once I fully recover, I'll be able to enjoy the full benefits of my new hype. I would personally not recommend it to just anyone. This is something that takes a lot of mental fortitude because there are so many nights that I wanted to quit. So I say come as mentally strong as you can. It's more mental than it is physical. If I could go back in time, I would absolutely do it again, without a shadow of a doubt. All right. That's my, that's, that was, yeah. Jesus. I, the update is not during the, 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 the height surgery. I, I want to update on two years after. You know what I mean? To see how it really goes. All right, so let's take a look at this stuff. I'm curious. During the surgery, there's a risk of nerve damage, which can potentially cause numbness, tingling, or weakness in the affected limb. In some cases, nerve damage may be permanent. Uh, I thought it would be more intense than that. I was curious about, like, here's why I'm saying that. More intense than that? Yes. Change of posture? Your joints are hurt? Nah, I think it's pretty... That's not that bad. That's not bad. Oh, you thought it was death? No. I thought it would be something like very strong risk of re-injury because the bone is brittle. It doesn't heal properly. You know, you cannot do certain exercises because the bone might snap. It's not actually properly. Like, I'm curious, what is the long-term prognosis for your day-to-day -day life? You know? Well, change of posture that can put strain on other joints. Nah, that, that's, it might as well just break my fucking leg. Again. I mean, change your posture. What does that even mean? You bend forward a little bit? You, so if you bend forward a little bit more, it puts it puts pressure on other joints, yeah. on other places. So maybe your your the, the, the bottom part of your leg is going to be bad, but now your knees are fucked up. And now you got to do something. And if you take pain, that's the thing. And if you take pain medicine, that's not good for your liver or your, your, or your kidneys. So now you can end up with kidney problems because of it. Nah, yeah. B. You know, beyond making fun of this guy or memeing on him, uh, I think it is... Interesting to have a face of like this surgery that's already out there and that a lot of mm -hmm. people are doing, and it was interesting hearing from somebody being so candid. So, you no know, kudos to him. And at the end of the day, I hope he has a good recovery and I hope he feels better. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think this is a lot about our society, and I'm curious where we're gonna go. Anything else you want to say? Oh, we're gonna go far. <laughs> oh, we're gonna go far. We're gonna go high, apparently. <laughs> Everybody about to be real tall in this bitch. Mm -hmm. Tall and big boobies. No more short people. Y'all y'all gonna be a thing in the pants. Y'all literally gonna be places we're gonna travel. We're gonna see y'all be like, you couldn't afford that $500 for that ring? 
wouldn't like today? Moses are. And he'd be like, no, I'm one of the originals. It would be like a whole religion and shit. Like, a, like natural versus unnaturals, synthetics versus non synthetics. Yeah. That's going to be the future. Yeah. That's going to be the next race ride. I'm not going to lie. I talk all this shit about plastic surgery, but if that cyberpunk shit happening, I'm oh. signing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put, put that little brain chip in me. I want to see a screen right here. I want to be, I'll edit, yo, instantly. I want, I want see-through vision, x-ray, everything. Nobody, nobody's surprised that you want that. Yeah, if they, if they say they can put a motor in your leg, I want. I don't even need a car. I'd be like, just buzzing around like the Jetsons and That's shit. That's exactly what someone that would be plugged in the Matrix would say. Yeah, I'm plugged in. <laughs> the Matrix sounds way more fun than whatever land Red Pillars live in. <laughs> Getting, you know, ladies pregnant randomly, having all these problems. Like, I want to be in the Matrix. That sounds like a good time. Yo, give me that PlayStation. Yo, just hit little buttons. <laughs> Get your fucking dick changed. Get one of them piston dicks or bah, like 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 vibrating features. Don't even cap. Imagine there was like a, an edit you could make where you literally press a button and the dick got a vibrating feature. So you yo, you make it pop in a bunch of different ways. Busting nuts. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that's the future I would sign up for. So I don't even want to be a hypocrite and be like oh, editing. Why would you want to edit yourself? But the edit got to be exciting. You know, if there's a plastic surgery for wings, deuces. <laughs> you don't think I'm gonna be out here flying for free, nigga? Just, uh, you know, <laughs> do it. If there's a plastic surgery for wings, a hundred percent I'm signing up. It's what the wing is like. Yo, fuck you, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> Caca. Yeah. What happened to that boy? I'm, I'm out of here, bro. If there's one for fins, so you can swim twice as fast, you don't think there's people who wouldn't sign up for that shit? Yeah, you're getting I'm saying plastic surgery can be interesting. I don't want to just be someone taller, though. Yeah. I want to, like, change species and shit. You know they're already doing transplants with the organs of animals? You're just nasty. You want to fuck fishes. Hmm? Hmm? I know you. Vibrating dick and fins. You know what I heard? You want to fuck fishes. If you bust inside someone in a pool, they can't get pregnant. That's so. Just say. That's not true. Don't try. <laughs> no, I heard something about that in the shower. Is that not true? You sure? Who told you that? Fresh. <laughs> <laughs> two plus two equal four. <laughs> you know what's so funny on that topic? I actually don't think she would keep it. Too. I don't think she is. I don't think so. I don't think she People is. Probably, I don't, we memed about it, but I don't think she'll keep it. I don't think she is. Yeah, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, that's it for today's video. If she's a girl, we call it Abigail. <laughs> saw that too? Yeah. I thought it was fire. I thought it was fire. Let's go. Let's end it here.